Hey, hey, fellas. So, um, this was the box where I was putting excess cards in. It's full. Got some more in there. All excess. That's just white and green right now. There's all the red after I've sorted through it. So, what have we got us here? Beach and block red. Crown of Flames, it's basically a fire breathing that can, you can pay red to bounce it. We've seen uh, similar cards in green and white. Fun little cycle. I want to say Crown of Flames is either a reprint or it's been reprinted. I don't recall which. That or there was a similar card somewhere at some point in time. Uh, it surprised me. Um, Goblin Spy is kind of dumb. It's a 1-1 one, one for a single red. You play with your top card with the top card of your library revealed. The only thing he's got going for him is a guy. He's I don't see why you would want to play with your top card revealed. I mean unless of course there was some effect that was dependent upon it. Like for example, um, play with your top card revealed, you may cast it as though it were in hand. Or some or if it were a creature, you may cast it as though it were in hand. Or if it's a land, you know, if there's some kind of effect keyed off of it, or something that lets you play it, that would be cool. That's I've got no problem. But doing it just because, seriously, in most respects, this guy is woefully inferior to Raging Goblin, and he's an uncommon. Why would you print this guy? Overload. Ugh. I don't like it. It's technically inferior to Shatter. In most respect. In pretty much every respect. It's a red for an instant. Destroy an artifact if it's mono cost is two or less. If you pay the kicker cost of two colorless, destroy it if it's mono cost is five or less. And it's like, really, guys? Really? Why would you want this? Why would you want something that most of the time is is worse than Shatter? And if you pay the kicker cost, it's worse than Shatter. Because the only as it costs more, it's less effective. I don't know. I really don't. Uh Scarred Puma isn't too bad. It's a 2-1 for a single red mana. Can't attack unless a black or green creature also attacks. That's a nasty little drawback. Um, I don't know. Well, the power toughness for mana cost is cool. The other drawback, not cool. Thunderscape Apprentice. Merchant Apprentice is earlier. Black and tap for one life, green tap to our creature, plus one, plus one, to one turn. That's reasonably solid. Breath of Diary Gods, I mentioned that yesterday while talking about um, that card whose name escapes me. I don't know, Canopy fill in the blank. You would not believe how many green cards there are, by the way, with the word Canopy in the name. But whatever. Breath of Diary Gods, not bad, reasonably solid. Chaotic Strike's an interesting one. It's an instant for a cult on a red. Uh, play it after blockers are declared. Choose target creature. Flip a coin. If you win the flip, the creature gets plus one, plus one until end of warp turn. Either way, you draw a card. It's alright. Uh, it's not exceptional or anything, but it's okay. Firebrand Ranger, he's a 2-1, pump green and tap him. And put a basic land from your hand into play. Eh, not impressed. Light and dark, it's kind of interesting. It's a color and a red for an instant for one damage target creature, uh, unless the creature is white or blue, in which case it does four instead. It's not bad. Um... Not a standing money stretch of the imagination, but you know, conditionally it's really awesome. 
Otherwise, it's only good for taking out like an annoying utility creature. <laughs> like an apprentice. Maniacal Rage, Enchanted Creature, gets plus two, plus two, can't block. It's alright. Um, these days, we've pretty much got better with uh, Goblin War Paint, which the same casting cost gives you the same bonus, and the creature gains haste. And can still block. Bouncing Cobble. Now, this is one of the interesting side things I've noticed. These um, Cobble predominantly are red and green. Um, we saw a handful of them in red, you know, the 3-3 uh, three, three Kavu that when he hits the board you draw a card, the Kavu Titan, the Serpentine Kavu, and all that other fun, happy stuff. Um, you're, there's also a lot of Kavu in red. Um, you, there's even one or two Kavu in black as well. Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of any blue kavu. Or white kavu, for that matter. Um, oh well. But, uh, Pouncing Kavu, he's a 1-1 one, one for a call center red. If you pay the kicker cost of two call center red, he comes in with two plus one plus one counters and has haste. Honestly, if you're not going to pay the kicker cost, there's almost no point to it. Almost no point. With the kicker cost, it's okay. But Kicker is a nice way to give um, a slightly overcosted small creature um, a really big bump later in game in a limited environment. Mm. Rage Weaver, another one of the Weavers, gives uh, green or black creatures haste. And I've made the observation before haste is one of the worst abilities to go out of your way to put on a creature um, if the ability isn't on the creature itself. Because, quite bluntly put, what does haste do after tur the first turn the creature's on the board? Nothing! If I give him flying, that can matter every single turn. If I give him first strike, that can matter every single turn. Flying, first strike, Vigilance! Vigilance can make a huge difference. You know, it allows you to go on the offensive and be on the defensive at the same time. That's some saucy stuff. You know? So, you know, first strike, vigilance, flying. Those are all good abilities, you know? Haste? Meh. Especially when you paint two colors for it. Really, guys? Two colors for haste? Why would you do that? Why? Rogue Kavu is a 1-1. One, one. Gets plus 2 plus 0 if he attacks by himself. I've never found him to be partic anything particularly more than cannon fodder. Ruby Leech. He's a 2-2 two, two first striker for a Colossus and a red. That amps the cost of your red spells. I don't like him. Especially since he's a rare. I mean, a free real seriously? Took a 2 2 first striker for a Colossus and a Red as a rare with a drawback. Why would you do that? I could understand if you made him maybe like a 3 1 first striker. That would have been spicy. That might have almost been worth it. But as a 2 2 first striker, you just look at him and it's like, really? Really? Come on, really? I mean,. Right now, in M12, we've got a 2-2 two, two for two colorless in a red. At, I believe he's common. We've got a 2-2 two, two first strike ogre with bloodthirst one. I mean, seriously. What are you guys thinking? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Savage Offensive. It's kind of spicy. Colts in a red, sorcery, creature you control at first right till end of turn. If you pay the kicker cost of green, they get plus one, plus one till end of turn. That's not bad. By any stretch of the imagination, it would be better for it being instant, but it would cost a heck of a lot more. I mean, first strike with optional plus one, plus one? No, it's solid. Scorching Lava. Colts in a red. Two turret creature player. 
Pay the kicker cost. Target can't be regenerated till end of turn. And if it will be put into a graveyard, it will for game. I, I don't know. I mean, and, you know, people look at it and like, guys, this was the standard for burn back in the day. This was considered decent. I mean, not top of the line, but this, this was considered pretty okay. And I want people to put a think about it. You know, burn, I don't know. And I'm also sad that Lightning Bolt's gone out of print again. Maybe we'll see it again in another few years. Not too many, I should hope. Lightning Bolt's a ni really nice, saucy card. I mean, I wouldn't even mind if they put Lightning Bolt up to an uncommon. And, yeah, I'm serious on that. Put, make Lightning Bolt an uncommon, guys. Reprint it, make it an uncommon. It's strong enough to fill an uncommon slot all darn day. Seriously. I mean, as it is, there have been several times in drafts when people have opened a pack, looked at the rares, looked at the uncommons, and took a lightning bolt. Because bolt is just that good. Bolt is just that good. But, yeah, let's put that aside for now. Fuck the scum it. Hold on a second, guys. Drop some cards. And the camera tipped over. Hold on. So, uh, yeah, I know I'm rambling about all sorts of things while I'm going through this. I should probably cut focus more on the cards. Ah, uh, she's a little burned out on the invasion and whatnot, but what? Well, eh, it happens. So I mean, here we have a uh, Shaven Harvest. It's a call and a red. It's an enchantment. You pay calls on a red to sacrifice a creature to, just to destroy. Target non-basic land. It's okay. There were a lot of non-basic lands in uh, Invasion Block. There was uh, that cycle of five at, at Common. Um, there were also um, some ghetto dual lands, you might even call them. They Tap for one of two allied colors. They came into play tapped. Um, they would also actually get reprinted. They were uncommon. They would, um, there was one that would tap for... Uh, I think it was like Seaside Citadel or something crazy like that. I can't remember what it was. And, um, that tapped for white-blue. And then there was a one that tapped for red-green, etc., etc., etc. You know how it goes. Skittish Kavu gets it's a one one gets plus one plus one so long as opponent controls no white or blue creatures. <sighs> Not terribly good. Um, stun. I want to say it's a reprint from Tempest. Something about Bert Gerard talking about, talking about how he like yeah it was a cheap shot. It's the only one I could afford. Dark creature can't block this turn. Draw a card. You know, nothing else. It's okay. Nothing else. It's good for uh, accelerating into the deck, further into your deck. Tribal Flame, Calls on a Red, Sorcery, X damage target creature player. X is the number of basic land types you control. It's all right. It's not bad. It's solid, especially in Evasion Block. You frequently have it doing three damage. Hooded Kavu, here's an interesting fellow. Two colors in a red for a 2-2, two -two. you pump black, and he can't be blocked uh, except by artifact and black creatures this turn. Now, here's the fun thing on that. Um, at the time, you know, you look at it's effectively fear. Effectively. But the way they're doing things right now, they could not replace that with the fear keyword. Because that would functionally change the card. And some people are going to sit there and say, how would that functionally change the card? And I'll tell you how. Fear, the game mechanic, the keyword fear, has a specific, a specific definition, right? Here's the whole thing. On this, you have something spelled out. You don't have a mechanic. You have, bam, conditions. Now, if I were to, 
use a sleight of mind type effect on it. Um, um, you know, some kind of effect that changes changes all references to one of one color word to another. If you drop a sleight of mind type effect onto that, you can replace the word black with red, blue, white, green, plaid. Okay, you can only do plaid in unsets, but that's not the point. That's not the point. <clears throat> the point being is that yeah, it's it actually is it's not much it's not a practical functional change, but it is a functional change. Kavu aggressor. This is a guy I kinda like. He's a 3-2 for two colors and a red. Can't block. That's a little bit of a drawback. But if you pay his kicker cost, which unfortunately is rather high, it's four colors, comes into play with a plus one, plus one counter. Now, granted, paying seven mana for a 4-3, not generally a good thing, but he's a 3-2. And that, of course, has also got the name of the word aggressor in his name, too. Can't argue with that, can you? Scout, uh, zero two, plus one, plus one, oh, plus one, plus O oh for each basic land type you control. Searing Rays. This was a card that I actually saw a lot of play in the draft. I can't say speak for Constructed. I wasn't really playing Constructed at the time. It's a two colors in a red. It's a sorcery. You choose a color. Searing Rays deals damage to each player equal to the number of creatures of that color that player controls. So that's not bad. Actually, in retrospect, I could see that being kind of, sort of used. There's the new white enchantment whose name escapes me that says you can't take dam you don't take any damage that would be on dealt to you on your turn. So searing rays and that it's like yeah, bam, who cares, whatever. Especially if you're playing like red, white, and blue, and it's just like yeah, I can't take damage on my turn. Here's a monobarbs, and here's this and that. All well and good. <laughs> Shivan Emissary. This guy was probably the best of the Emissaries. Um, or believe pretty strong for all the Emissaries. Uh, the Black Emissary, I believe, had a creature balance effect in it. The Blue Emissary would, uh, if I recall correctly, the Blue Emissary nuked an enchantment. The Green Emissary nuked an artifact. The White Emissary nuked a land. Um, I want to say the white emissary was probably my favorite of them, though the black was probably the best. He's a 1-1 one, one for two coals and a red with a kicker of a coals and a black. And when he hits the board, if you paid the kicker cost, nuke target non-black creature. No regeneration for him. Solid. Slimy Kavu, 2-2, two, two, tap target land becomes a swamp. Um, that's something we saw that was interesting, is we saw some cards that were mana fixers, and colors you don't normally expect to see mana fixers in. As an example, the Slimy Kavu. Um, you see a fair amount of that. Uh, for, you know, you expect a little bit in green, and even in blue to a certain degree, because blue has a history of being able to change things. Um, for example, somewhere in blue you have a, co a creature or two that you'd, um, you tap the change target lands type till end of turn, and that's good for mana fixing, or it's good for screwing up your opponent's mana base. For example, if your opponent's say playing green, say your opponent's playing green, black, blue, and they've only got one island on the board, you know they've got two forests, two swamps on the board, and one island. During their upkeep, you tap this. You turn their island into a swamp. Yeah, you're tying up a 2-2 creature. Absolutely. But on the reverse side of the coin, you're depriving your opponent of one of his colors. The color deprivation, land destruction, screwing with your opponent's mana base, those are really powerful things. Especially in a limited environment. But, um... Yeah, we saw all sorts of interest. Uh, I want to say somewhere in uh, Apocalypse with the Tundra Kavu, which uh, turns target land into an island or plains until end of turn. It's kind of interesting. A reference to the old um, Alpha Beta Unlimited revised card Tundra, um, whose rules text can be summarized as land, island, plains. 
Uh, tectonic instability. Whenever a land comes into play, tap all lands its controller controls. It's kind of interesting. Turf wound. It's an instant for two calls and a red. Target player can't play land this turn. Draw a card. Eh. Oh hum. Urza's Rage. This was probably the second. I want to say the second best burn spell in Invasion. It's two colors and a red. Can't be countered by spells or abilities. Three target creature or player. If you paid the kicker cost of eight colorless and a red, that if you're if you're willing to pay ten and double red for it, uh, it does. 10 damage instead, and the damage can't be prevented. It's it's okay. I mean, mostly you just use it for 3 damage. I only got 2 of them, though. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got at least one in the Phyraxia versus uh, Coalition Duel decks. I'm not sure if I have another one anywhere, though. Hmm. 100% sorry. I don't think I do. Machino Grappler is a 3 1 optional trample. Continuing the cycle of uh, each color having the uh, modest size common creature with an activated ability and an, an allied color. It's the Hooded Kavu and the Machino Grappler. Zap! No, I'm not talking about the old American Gladiator. Well, I suppose she would be kind of old now, wouldn't she? But she was cool back in the day. But I'm not talking about her. Zap. Zap, 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 zap. We're not talking about Brannigan, either. Two calls in a red. Instant. One damage to a creature or player. Targeted. Draw a card. It's, it's pretty solid. I mean, it's basically... It's like flare, but it's an actual cantrip instead of being a slow trip. Um, I don't remember if I talked about this before. If I, ha I, if I haven't, I'm going to anyway. Um, cantrips and slow trips. Um, Ice Age introduced the cantrip idea. That is, you play a spell or effect with a you play a spell with a modest ability, very modest. Dare I say small. And during the next upkeep, you draw a card. So generally, what will happen is either you cast, you know, you cast it in the next upkeep, whether it's your upkeep or your opponent's upkeep, doesn't really matter. You draw an extra card. And um, I've, I want to say Mirage rigged it up so that the card draw was immediate instead of delayed. And you know, eventually, you know, we got the idea, the, the distinction, we, you know that we started calling the originals slow trips and the newer ones cantrips because you had delay on drawing the card. Um, right up there with, for example, um, Arcane Denial in... I want to say it was... I believe it was Alliances? Yeah, it was in Alliances. I wrote a handful of them in my Sliver deck because it's a hard counter for a Colors in a Blue. It's not a particularly good hard counter, but it's still a hard counter. Um, Arcane Denial is a Colson in a Blue counter-target spell. On the next upkeep, you may, uh... On the next upkeep, you may draw a card. Your The control of the counter spell may draw up to two cards, if I recall what it was correctly. Was it, or was it two for you and one for your opponent? I can't remember clearly off the top of my head. But, um, yeah, it's a hard, it, it was a hard counter, and that's the main reason why it's in there. That, and of course, is because... As far as that the sliver deck was concerned, it really didn't care what you drew most of the time. I mean, if you're not drawing a board sweeper or something that locks me down, I don't care what you draw. Is it a land? Cool. I don't care. Is it a creature? Cool. I don't care. Does it lock me down? No. I don't care. Is it a board sweeper? No. I don't care. Only in there... Stop board sweepers and lot sounds. Yeah, combo it's not exactly hot against, but yeah. Major's contest. What the heck does this even do? Oh, you and target spells controller bid life. You start the bidding with high bid of one. 
In turn order. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. In turn order, each player may top the high bid. The bidding ends when the high bid stands. Highest bidder loses life equal to the high bid if you win the bidding counter that spell. So basically, it's a contest between you, or opponent, your, you and your opponent saying, how important is this spell to you? Is it worth it? How much life is this spell worth to you? And it's one of the few wrench cards that has uh, the capacity to just playing hard to, to, uh, to be just playing counter a spell. That isn't blue. Ancient Kavu! Three colors in a red for 3-3. Three, three. Pretty much makes him a hill giant with an odd ability. You pump two colors and he becomes colorless till end of turn. That actually mattered in this set. Um, is he a great card? No, not by any stretch of the imagination. But the ability to become colorless really did matter in this set. I mean, that, that could really change things. And, um... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as another interesting side uh, note, he's a functional reprint of a card from Mirage. Um, I want to say it was an Afreet of some kind. I'm tempted to say Harmont and Afreet, but I'm not 100% certain. But basically, yeah, there was a 3-3 three, three Afreet with three colors and a red that could turn itself colorless. Or was it a spirit? Maybe Harmont and Afreet or something. Now I'm not certain. I'd have to look it up now. But yes, trust me, it's there. I remember the illustration had like, um, the picture had like a border with like a feather or something in it. And it looked like there was a guy running around with a spear. I can't really describe it. I'd know it on sight. Bender break! Another one of the this or that uh, cards. Three colors in a red. Each player separates all land cards. He or she controls into two face-up piles. For each player, an opponent chooses a pile. Destroy all lands in that pile. Tap all lands in the other pile. Kid science. Fun stuff. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's a cute little card. I like it. Collapsing borders. Three colors in a red. Beginning of each player's upkeep, that player gains one life for each uh, basic land type among lands he or she controls. But then Collapsing Border does three damage to them. So, uh, this, this can hurt people. Also, as an interesting note, um, when these cards say basic land types, it does not necessarily mean you have to be playing basic lands. I mean, you can theoretically have three lands on the board and have all five basic land types covered. It's like, yeah, I've got, um, I don't know, um, a Tundra, um, a Bayou. See, Tundra is Island Plains, Bayou is Swamp Forest, yeah. You can have a Tundra, a Bayou, and a Mountain on the board. You've got all five land types represented. Kabul Runner, he's a 3-3. Three, three. Has haste as long as no opponent controls a white or blue creature. He's okay. I wouldn't put him as an uncommon, but he's okay. Skizik! Oh dear, the Skizik. He's a splashable ball lightning. He's three colors and a red for a 5-3 trample haste. With a kicker of red. If you pay the kicker, you don't have to sacrifice him at end of turn. He's interesting. I, I kind of like him. I've got three of them. Holy crap. Look at that. Stand or fall. Hey, look, guys. It's another this or that card. Uh, at the beginning of your combat, separate all creatures defending player controls into two face-up piles. Only creatures in the pile that player's choice may block this turn. That's funky. That's funky. Kavu Monarch. Two calls, double red for a 3-3. Three, three. Um, all Kavu have Trample. Whenever another Kavu comes into play, put a plus one, plus one counter on him. That's not bad. You think it's reasonably solid. It got better in the next set. 
because you had the, but I guess they called it the gating mechanic, if I recall correctly. Um, there were several creatures um, that were two colored that said when they come into play, bounce a creature of one of their co uh, one of their colors. And so, for example, if you had a red green kavu, and I know there was a okay phone cut me off phone brain fart. Camera cut me off. I'm not 100% like sure where, so I'm just going to keep going from where I was, try and splice it together, and if whatever I miss, I'll try and cover, recover tomorrow. So, Kavu Titan, um, he's a 3-3 for 2 and double red. All Kavu have trampled. Nice. And, um, irritates with this phone. This uh, camera cuts me off so often. Of course, the fact that I'm a horrible cameraman doesn't help it any. But, uh, anywho, um, whenever, an other, whenever any other Kavu comes into play, he gets a plus one, plus one counter. Um, that's not bad. There's plenty of Kavu in this set. There's more in the next, especially with the uh, gating mechanic, where it is, um, you have two color creatures, and when it comes into play, you bounce a creature of one of their colors. So, um, there was a, um, a Kavu for like four or five mana that was red or green. Comes into play, he gets a counter, has it bounce itself. Who cares? Play it again next turn, he gets bigger. Yeah. Monarch is getting bigger, Monarch gets bigger, Monarch gets bigger, Monarch smashes your face. It's a beautiful thing. Of course, on the other hand, that's right around the time Monarch gets hit with like some sort of black form of hard removal. Ah, uh, Thunderskip Master! Master. Master. Anyways, he's a 2-2 two -two for 2 and double red. Double black, target player loses 2 life, you gain 2 life. That's pretty saucy. And of course, the double green ability, target creature gets plus 2, plus 2 to the turn. Pretty solid, actually. Loafing Giant, there's a card nobody ever wanted. He's a 4-6 for 4 and a red. Whenever he attacks or blocks, you put the top card of your library into your graveyard. If the card is a land, to prevent all combat damage that he would deal this turn. Honestly, for his mana cost, he's not that good. He doesn't deserve to be a rare at all, in my opinion. I mean, it's like, seriously, guys, it's like... He's, he's not far behind Crawl. He, he's, he's only a little bit lower than Crawl on the power scale. Halam Jin. Once again, one of the Jinns that gets Nake 2, Nake 2, if he's part of the most common color on the board. He's a 6-5 haste for 6 mana. It's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. Callus Giant. This guy's nice. He's a 4-4 four, four for 6 mana. Normally that wouldn't be fantastic. If his source would deal 3 damage or less to him, prevent that damage. Now what's fun about that is it means you can't kill him by gang blocking him. You can't kill him by hitting him with more than one spell. It's like you have to deal with all four from one source, or it just doesn't count. Kid sense fun stuff. Oh, obliterate. There's some neat stuff. Uh, can't be countered. Destroy all artifacts, creatures, and lands. No regeneration allowed. For six and double red. Yeah, it's a lot, but... He blows up stuff. And here's a fun fact for you guys. Artifacts, creatures, and lands. So for uh, those of you who are, really, who are kind of astute, you'll note that there are no planeswalkers at the time. It doesn't say anything about planeswalkers. Yep. Yep. Uh, D2 fire. It's kind of nice. X and a red sorcery. X damage star creature player. You can pay an extra two colors and play whenever you play an instant. It's not bad. That's actually reasonably solid. I don't feel it deserves to be a rare... Um, but it's reasonably solid. I would put that only slightly higher on the power scale than uh, Fireball. And be perfectly on it, you know? And a little bit higher than Disintegrate. I mean, we've had spells more... We've had burn cards more powerful than that. With lower rarity. So, hey. But, you know, I guess somewhere along the line, people decided that needs to be a rare. Um... Then I've heard that Invasion was the first set des with, uh, designed with limited play in mind. So I'm thinking, 
Um, because of that, you've got a lot of weird things going on, like cards that people would knew would be really powerful and limited, being either high costed or um, being placed at a higher rarity than you might otherwise expect them to. Oh well, I'm gonna finish this up and uh, get this posted. Figure out what I'm gonna do with it. Yeah, there's gonna be a transition in the middle of it. You've probably already seen it if you've gotten this far. Shh, it's a secret. Oh, and cat's still hanging out on top of the fridge. I don't know why. She does that every now and again. She has like a handful of spots that she just rotates between hanging out in for a week or two and. And she's done. I think she's falling asleep over there. You falling asleep, cat? Yeah, stupid cat. Oh, no, she's awake. And her tongue's lolling out of her mouth. Yeah, she's got no teeth. Mentioned that before. She's also getting old. She's a good cat most of the time, though. Hates strangers. Have I mentioned that before? She hates strangers. She will hiss like a bit of vipers if she, at you, if she don't know you. And she loves being pet on the head. Alrighty. We'll call this a video. Get this spliced up. I'll catch you later, guys. Be good.